Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India learners to the another session of international business management i am dr manisha goswami assistant professor at institute of business management gla university mathura let us begin with the lecture number 3 and lecture number 3 is about globalization and geography of the world before i begin with this lecture let's look at what we did in lecture number 2 in the previous lecture we try to differentiate international business with those of domestic business we figure out various basis of difference between the two like geographical boundaries business regulation business practices business research like this so and so forth we try to figure out the various reasons which can be the facilitating point for you from moving from your home country to the host country Next we talked about in the previous lecture about the various strategies of going international we come across there are two predominant areas through which you can enter into international market like FDI foreign direct investment other would be the portfolio investment portfolio investment is going to be a volatile money because you are not putting up your money in the assets of the host country so it's going to be volatile the is how easy it is entering into your country so easily it can be taken up from your country and this what happened during the time of uh, the uh, recession took place in the year in the year of 2008 in america whatever the money americans have invested in india they start withdrawing their money and because of the recession in america there was a slow down in our country as well because of the volatile money which american investors have put in our indian market stock market the next part that is fdi that we had discussed we come to know that fdi can be possible in three different way that is greenfield investment greenfield development brownfield investment we also come to know about a special economic zone area we come to know about export processing zone area free trade zone area we come to know about the difference between merger joint venture acquisition strategic alliances we come to know about export licensing we come to know about leasing what different mechanisms are there for entering into the international market we had discussed them in detail in the previous lecture now let's talk about the lecture number 3 learning by the end of this lecture you will be able to understand the perspective of the globalization from the darker side so far we come to know that globalization is adding value to different nation but there is other side of the coin as well so in this particular lecture we will talk about the dark sides and penalty of the globalization next we will look of the geography of the world where we will try to see how this geography of the world can be taken into account when you are starting your international business which particular continent or which particular continent country could be the right place for importing certain products or exporting certain products will be the perspective of understanding the geography of the world now let's begin with our discussion the first topic that is globalization what globalization is i think so far been clear to almost each one of you that globalization is the integration of the world economy globalization is about merging the entire globe into a single market or a single global village globalization refers to the shift towards more integrated and independent world economy it involves removing all restrictions all sort of the barriers from the foreign investment to leverage the benefit of comparative advantage in terms of capital technology and skill labor from the perspective of macroeconomic factors we can find that globalization trend has been influenced largely because of two major areas one is a decline in the trade barrier and the second one is the advancement in the technology 
because of the decline in the trade barrier what actually happened the different countries started finding the host country as the most promising country to launch their product into what used to happen earlier because of but because of a very strict ceiling of the trade barriers country don't feel it conversant to enter into any of the host country they find it's better to do the business in home country why to bear unnecessary licensing why to bear the unnecessary entry charges in the host country and they start comparing that if i would be entering into a host country this is not going to leverage any profits to me because i have to start everything from the scratch and beginning things from the scratch and that too the tough regulatory bodies of the government is going to create a herculean task for me to continue and sustain in that country so they usually don't feel like getting into any host country but with the advent of globalization and the process started taking place where people start liberalizing the policies and asking the foreign investors to invest maximum in the home country in the different host countries as well so that was one of the reason why globalization is growing at a very fast pace another reason is the advancement in technology Ad technology advancement is taking place uh, it's uh, amazing and phenomenal right the level of the advancement which is taking place in technology is really amazing and phenomenal in the year since the year 1980s because of this advancement in technology in the era of telecommunication in the era of information technology and transportation technology it is becoming so easy for the global company to globalize their business every foreign company is spreading the technology across the globe which is further facilitating the global business so this these are the points which make us feel that globalization is undoubtedly a good area it's the thing which is facilitating each one of the sector or the unit or the country to grow and flourish but this is just one side of the coin when we think from the post other perspective because of globalization what other things have also started happening like uh, human and drugs trafficking uh, trafficking start happening because of globalization terrorism start increasing because of globalization pandemic diseases are spread, uh, spreading like anything so globalization it's not just the helping and facilitating it is it is also having some gray area darker side which we need to know well in advance and so that why we need to know so that we can find out the corrective actions to overcome those dark sides or the gray areas of the globalization and can take the maximum benefits of the positive aspects of the globalization we should not be afraid of globalization rather we should be wise and logical enough in understanding what are the negatives of the globalization so that corrective actions can be taken in order to minimize the negativeness or the weakness of the globalization and we can make the maximum out of the positive or the strength of the globalization to strengthen the economy of the nation when it comes to the the components of the globalization we also know that globalization is taking place in two major area globalization at the place of market and globalization on the other perspective is of product that means globalization of market means that you are merging the market of the different nation now there is no country like like uh, india it cannot have a trading with nepal nepal couldn't have a trading with bangladesh bhutan myanmar now every country be it your neighbor country or it's a foreign country like a, the distant country like america or the european country or african country the african co countries or the australian countries you can have the business with any one of them that is the globalization of the market entire globe is become a global village it become a single market that is an integration of all the markets and integration of the world economy is what the globalization is all about now there is no such separation on the basis of the boundaries or on the basis of the different country or the continent or the region that they are geographically present in next is the globalization of the product globalization of product means identifying the best place from where you can get the raw material at the cheaper rate or identifying a country who can do the production on your behalf 
again at a cheaper rate so that you can take the advantage of national cost of the national differences in terms of the cost and the quality of product or the skills they are offering to you companies like uh, fujitsu of the japanese the companies like uh, lg of korea the company like panasonic sony apple everyone nike everyone is into the globalization of product they are doing some r and d they are doing some designing work they are preparing certain spare parts in their home country but they are not into the proper production or the manufacturing or assembly of the product in their home country rather asking china vietnam indonesia thailand philippines india to outsource their work so this is the globalization of product which is adding to the benefit which is adding to the profit of these international businesses so these are the essential two components of the globalization now we are heading towards the dark side after knowing that what globalization plus points and the components of the globalization how it is facilitating international business how it is helping different business in terms of profit maximization or in terms of their wealth maximization now we are heading towards the darker side or the darker portion of the globalization let's take an example when any rich country try to extend their financial support to a poor country what they would be doing there is a press release stating out that such uh, somewhere around uh, 50 to 80 dollar billion dollar a particular rich country is sending every year to poor countries for taking care of the slum areas or maybe some pandemic issues or epidemic issues of that area they are extending the financial aids to them every year 50 to 80 billion dollars every year the rich countries are extending their financial support to poor nations but surprisingly on the same year poor countries are sending 500 to 800 billion dollars back to the rich countries that means foreign rich countries western countries for every single dollar of first aid they are offering to poor country over the table they are getting 10 dollars under the table this is the irony of the globalization that means globalization is also facilitating some sort of bribe some sort of illegal activity illicit activity terrorism human terror trafficking drugs trafficking is also happening because of globalization pandemic disease is spreading like anything biological war is taking like anything because of this globalization nothing to worry about nothing to be afraid of but we should know these are the problems and knowing the problem is the wise wisest thing can happen because you can take the corrective course of action let us further look at the dark side of the globalization and try to see how these different dark side of the globalization has impacted different area of the world when it comes to globalization and its impact on management how it it has affected the management with the advancement with the development and globalization what is happening you want to expand your unit from your home country to the host country and when you want to establish your unit you cannot solely rely on the recruitment selection that you had with the local population you need some experts of your com- company from your home country to visit the ho- host country establish the unit over there and after a span of maybe 2 year 3 year whatever the time is going to take to get established you are supposed to remain there this is what management is asking you to do because of the globalization now you have to move from your home country leaving all your family your relatives your ease of life your comfort of life back in the country your home country and you have been asked to move to the host country and it is your job so you have to do it you cannot deny you cannot say no otherwise you have to lose your job and you have a lot of responsibility over your shoulder so you have to say yes with heavy heart then what is the sole responsibility of the manager of your organization is to ensure that every comfort is going to be taken care of if this is happening then it is okay no harm people are ready to take challenges because 
they are new they know that with every challenge there will be the further upliftment there will be further growth in the personal resume as well as the overall growth of the organization so they are ready to take the challenge but you as a manager you as a HR manager of the organization has to ensure some peace in the mind of that worker so i think we can understand the negative aspect and the moment we come to know about the negative aspect we can call for the probable solution to it that is why we need to understand and study the dark side of the globalization next would be the globalization impact on jobs because of globalization a lot of american people have hate or they show the hatred toward indians why because they find that indians are taking away their jobs so they show their hatred against the indian or the ancient and uh, citizens because they are finding they are comparatively at a cheap they are available at a lower labor cost and americans are costing very heavily it is the survey and they come across that a kind of the work american companies are getting it done in india is costing 100 dollars which is just one fifth in india that means for the work which is going to cost them 100 dollar per labor they are here paying only 20 dollars per labor so it is a benefit of the company so they are moving from their home country to the host country but the home country citizens are missing out the opportunity of the job if such option of the if such option is not available to the company because of globalization they would have asked the americans to get the work done and there would be more job opportunities more uh, better living standards of the american they don't have to rely on uh, the dearens allowances being given by the government of that country so we need to find out the solution to this as well next globalization and the wage globalization and the wage that means globalization is significantly impacting the wage as well just now i'll give you an example to you the kind of the work they are getting it done by outsourcing it from the countries who are offering cheap labor resources to them is one fifth time lesser than the amount they have to pay in their home country so the system of paying the wages is also getting hampered because of the globalization and from the perspective of organization it is the best thing is happening but from the perspective of the citizen they are missing out certain opportunities they are missing out the chances of getting the job and improving their living standard or improving the demographic of the nation as a whole next globalization impact on women at the workplace is another very important perspective to be taken care of it's not only india where women are badly treated it's across the globe wherever you go you will find that everywhere be it a brazil or be it american countries or other countries no matter how developed you are no matter how developing or underdeveloped you are there is an ill treatment against the women everywhere and with this globalization this thing has further aggravated and there is a further aggravation of violence against the women so keeping that into consideration governments are coming up with better policies better rescue measures for the women people are getting aware about their rights earlier there were a lot of issues even women were not aware about their rights now people have started questioning they start asking for their own rights their own own uh, freedom of speech and everything this is what start happening earlier they've been suppressed now with the globalization this become important for the women also to understand learn about their rights learn about the there is a freedom of expression there is a freedom of speech and work and there is no uh, there is no limit of working there is no limit of growing at heights but you equally need to understand your domain you equally need to understand your law system your country legal system you need to be aware of right so that is the thing which every woman should be aware about the legal legalities of a country in which they are working so the woman at the workplace has to be taken care of it is not like that they need to be given extra benefits but there should be no ill treatment ill treatment has to be avoided 
there are certain things which need to be taken care of like in india as per the indian norms the none of the women should be allowed to remain in the factory or the manufacturing setup after 7 pm and the women should not be asked to come in a factory as per the factory act 1948 the none of the women should be allowed to come before 6 am in the morning so such law system is there in our country and every people who are into a particular country like India has to adhere to the labor laws of the country. And if any woman is moving from India to any abroad country, then she has to have fair understanding of the labor law system of that country so that she can protect herself from any sort of ill treatment. Next arise the point of the globalization and its impact on the child labor. It's not only in India, where the child labor is being banned, it's also in USA. But despite of such strict measures, government is taking against uh, the child labor, taking against the protection of the child health and mental well-being. It is like the people are also trying to come up with some law system. Uh, some psychological sessions not only for the children but also for the parent because parents are actually forcing the child of 5 to 14 years of age to go and work in factory or in some offices right they are forcing them so some of some people have the social workers or NGOs have started the counseling session for the parents as well as for the kids and even they started some providing some education system, some basic schooling to their uh, to the kids of above uh, 5 years till 14 years of age so that they will be confined to some activity, they will not be seems to be free to their parents and if it will be seen to by the parent that the kids are free, they might ask them to go for some of the jobs. So the NGOs and social workers in India are uh, very correctly working in protecting the child labor and in India and US also child labor is strictly banned. But irony is that of, as per the status given by international labor organization that around 130 million children of age between 5 to 14 are working full time. Apart from this, 120 million workers across the globe, I'm talking of, across the globe are working for part time. Out of these entire 130 million working full time and 120 million working part time across the globe, out of this 250 million kids, 61% children or the child are from Asia. 37% child are from Africa and 7% child are from Latin America. That means despite of all the efforts being taken up by international labor organization and different countries from their own level, they are putting up the various law and the system, even in the uh, law of India, that Factory Act, it has been very clearly stated out that none of the child should be allowed to work in a factory below 14 years of age. And if it is so, it is going to be considered as an illegal act. And those who are 14 and above years of age, they have to undergo the medical certification. They need to carry a token while working in a factory. This is as per the law of Factory Act 1948 in India. And the same thing might be practicing in other nations as well. But despite of that, child are working. Though India is taking various, various strict measures to protect the child, to develop their mental, physical well-being by not allowing them to work in any factory or particularly uh, when no matter you are 14 or above 14 years of age but still you are not 18 years of age, in that case also as per the labor law of India, the child are not allowed to work with hazardous machinery, the child are not allowed to be near or around the hazardous chemicals. This is the system but despite of that, under despite of that, some things uh, some of the factories or the units are into the process of recruiting the child. Why they usually recruit child? Again, the answer is same because they are finding them cheaper than adult. Child is ready to work for even small penny of the work, but adult won't be. As they are not qualified, so whatever the amount you will give to them, they will accept it. In Sri Lanka alone, there are 5 lakh child working which is an irony and in Mexico, million of child are working. 
So there has to have some strict measure for protecting the child because if child is not getting a freedom or space to groom and develop the brain and physical well-being then ultimately our future generation is going to be handicapped. So if you want a future generation to be healthy enough, should be logical enough physically as well as mentally, then you need to give them the time, space to grow and nurture their body. That's the impact, negative impact of the globalization which we have to take into consideration. Another aspect of the from the perspective of the dark side of the globalization that globalization is having a negative impact on the developing nation. Most of the people think that developing nations are flourishing like anything because of the globalization but the reality is not the same. Rather developed nations are becoming more richer and poor nations are getting poorer and poorer even because of the globalization. So how to handle this contradictory situation? Things are projecting in different manners and actual in practice thing and something else is happening. So how to pro protect this kind of uh, the deviation which is happening? When it comes to a developing nation, any developed nation would only like to move to developing country when they are finding some cheap resources. They might be finding the raw material at a cheaper rate. They might be finding the labor skill labor at a comparatively cheaper rate. They might be finding the government is quite supportive. Government is giving good rebates to us. These may be the reason why any company would like to outsource or would like to come to the developing country. So if they would be coming with the mindset that I am getting things in a cheaper rate, what they would be doing? They would be depleting the resources. They would be making maximum use of the resources. Ultimately, who is going to suffer? The domestic companies and the next generation is going to suffer. Because of such massive industrialization, global warming is taking place. People are not taking care of the waste emitting out from the product. There was an analysis if America start doing the production of battery in their own country rather than asking the China, America for sure is going to be one of the polluted country in the world. But what they are very wise, they found that if I would be getting into the production of the battery backup system or the battery for the mobile phone in my own country, lot of carbon emission will take place and it's going to pollute the environment and at the same time it is going to cost me much. So let me look for a country who can do it for me. So that's how they are strategic in terms of taking their own decisions. So from the perspective of developed nation, globalization is paving their way like anything. But from the perspective of developing countries, things are not so much in favor. However, Brazil, China and India is trying to change this equation. Now let's look at some more points from the perspective of globalization as penalty. High performing MNCs are less effective at setting a shared vision and engaging employees around it than their local counterpart. Because the, when you are moving to a foreign country, your set of vision which you hold in your home country cannot be exactly replicated in the host country. Why? Because you need to have a polycentric approach rather than having an ethnocentric approach. The perspective that you are having for your home country cannot be true or same for the host country because of the political differences, because of the cultural differences, because of the socio-cultural differences. So you need to customize, you need to think from the perspective of the host country and from their perspective, you have to set your vision. It cannot be exact replica here. So somehow we are reducing in terms of the quality. Global leader men find maintaining professional standards and encouraging innovations of all kind become difficult. They do business in multiple countries and hence find it more challenging to build government and community relations and business alliances. That's another penalty of the globalization on the economy like us. 
MNC evolved their own code of conduct, but framing such conduct code or conduct is quite easy than its execution. Policy like whistle blowing, night working shift, gift giving, and the like are subject to be questioned based on the local culture that vary from country to country. So far we have understood the darker side of the globalization and we try to figure out certain problems and the probable solutions to it. Yes, dear learners, let's talk about the geography of the world. The perspective of looking at the geography of the world is not to know about the geographies, but also to, it's not just to know only about the geographies, but also to know about the different regional integration taking place at different geography and how it is benefiting the economy of them so that we can also form some similar or better regional integration to have a sustainable and better economy of the nation. We will be talking about the world map. We will be talking about the Asia, Europe, America, Africa, North and South America and Africa map and the sources of these map being taken from Google. Let's look at the world map. And while looking at the world map, try to find out the different essential continents of a country. World map consists of seven major continents, like this is your Asia, right? This is your Asia region covering India and everything, right? Even this portion is going to be covered like this, right? Right? So this is your Asia region. Here is your European region broadly classifying. Here is your Africa region. This is what broadly classifying. Here is a Swiss canal which is connecting the Africa with the USA, right? Gulf of uh, Suez is there. Peninsula is there. Sinai Peninsula is there, which is though in the part of Asia, uh, but it is an actually an African part. Here it's your North America, here is your South America, this is your Australia, this is your Antarctica. So what is the perspective of looking at these different continent is to have a fair idea which country is lying in which continent. And why we need to know which country is lying into which continent? Because every continent is having their own resources. They're having their own mineral power or their resources. They have their own culture. They have their own tradition. They have their own climatical conditions. On the basis of which we can target a particular continent or the continent country. Now further try to get deeper into the world map and let us look at some of the oceans surrounding the entire world. Arctic Ocean at the top we could see. Here, the North Pacific Ocean, we could see this side, we could see there are, there, this is the Northern Pacific Ocean part and this is the Southern Pacific Ocean part is here, right? You could see that this is happening so and this is also the same is here. This is the Northern Pacific and this is your Southern Pacific Ocean. This is your North Atlantic Ocean. This is your South Atlantic Ocean. Indian Ocean is there and you why you need to know again about these different oceans because these different oceans will also be helping you and facilitating you to identify the availability of different resources and the transportation costs you need to bear uh, it can be via sea or it can be via air so which particular mode I can make use so that my transportation cost can be decreased. Now apart from knowing the geographical location of these different world, the oceans and the continent, we should also be aware about uh, the different major countries of the world. Major, major countries means the most preferred countries for doing trading and the business perspective. So major countries of the world are like Great Britain, like France, Italy, United States, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, China, India, Australia, right? These are the major uh, countries or the continents where you would like to do the business the most. Even the France and Japan, 
these are Korea, South Korea is one of the most promising and play, uh, play countries where people are looking for. Even nowadays, uh, the attention of the people are moving towards Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines and even in the Vietnam country for outsourcing their work. So these countries are becoming across the globe a prominent country. They are having a significant position in the world market and every next big developed nation is looking up to these kind of small countries like Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines for outsourcing their work for Malaysia. The people are looking up to the people are looking up to India, though India is quite big in terms of population size and the infrastructure is also growing at a very hefty speed. But people are looking up to these different areas in order to outsource their work. So you as a student of international business should have such ideology and perspective of looking at the world map that how you can gain benefit out of the entire world, how you can find out which particular country is rich in which particular resource and how I can leverage the benefit of it of the locational cost advantage and maybe the quality this particular nation is holding. We can take the advantage of that. Now let us look at you being India, being at India, what you are supposed to know, you, sh you, should, be, you should be aware of your boundary, you should be aware of your boundary, you should be aware who are your neighbour countries, why you need to know about your neighbour countries, because your neighbour countries can be an immediate source of supply of material to you. So you should know about it. Like in India, just above ne India, Nepal is there. Just in the north, the further you go, China is close to us. Pakistan is close to us. Afghanistan is also sharing a little border with us. Bhutan, Bangladesh, Myanmar is also there with us. Sri Lanka at the bottom is there with us. So if you need, if you are in some immediate crisis, you need some support and help. You can look up to your neighbor country. And for this, India is trying the level best to maintain healthy relations with the neighbor country, despite of all all um, activities which are happening from Pakistan and China despite of that they always try to be amicable towards uh, these countries even. So neighbor country should be known to us and the reason I think must be clear to you so that we can have a quick gratification of the resources. Now after knowing the world map let us move towards the another important aspect of understanding the climatic link of the world with the countries. When you will look at this world map, what you will see the Antarctica region, this Antarctica region is having a temperature ranging from minus 10 to minus 50. That means it's not an ideal place, it's a coldest place in the entire world. Or we, if you are looking for some sort of business over there, you need to find out how you are going to preserve, hold and how you are going to do business and what kind of the work or business would be more successful in such areas. So you have to be, you have to think twice before entering into such area having the temperature even below the 40 minus 40 degrees Celsius. So not, uh, and when we look at this portion, this red colored portion, with little deviation China, China is going to be out from this red color, right? So what the kind, this is considered to be an ideal location having a range of temperature from 15 or 14 degrees Celsius till 30 degrees Celsius and even in the extreme summer encroachment time it might go to 46 or 47 degrees Celsius. By and large the temperature seems to be moderate and mostly the business is ha happening in these area. China having a temperature somewhere ranging from 0 to uh, somewhere ranging from minus uh, 20 to 20 degrees Celsius rather than it is ranging from minus 10 to 10 degrees Celsius in case of China. Right now the temperature of China at if you will see and find that temperature of China currently is minus degree minus 7 degrees Celsius. And the region in yellow colors are indicating the temperature ranging from 7 to 11 degrees Celsius. Here your Canada is coming up right here. Some of the European countries and the uh, European countries are coming up right here. The Co Japanese country and the Korean countries are coming up in this region. 
why we need to know about the climatical changes and uh, the the link of the climate with other nation so that you can find out which particular product could be sale to such country like in case of our country when you are in the northern country and you are thinking of expanding your woolens business what you will be doing you will be expanding your business to the colder countries rather than thinking that i am working very well in northern country let me expand my business to southern country there the woolen woolens are of no use so these kind of the understanding and ideology will come and this right correct and right and correct strategy you can frame keeping in consideration the climatical changes taking place and the climatical relationship or the link different nations are having with each other now let's move to the map of asia asia is the largest and mo most populous of seven continent total 48 countries are there it is the home of nearly 60% of world population area ranging from 4 crore 45 lakh 79000 square kilometers world one third total land area asia is having one third land of the total world area and 8.7% of the earth total surface area is surrounded by the asia population density is 100 per square kilometer asia is such a big and the most populous seven continent and it there is a need of identifying the untapped area of the asia if you could find out you will be able to get the huge market potential for maximizing your profits india has also formed some of the regional trade block like asean free trade area is there there is a asia pacific free trade uh, asia pacific trade block is there south asia free trade area is there right the perspective of forming such regional trade block is to facilitate trading among the member nation as far as afta is concerned it originally having six members namely bernoulli indonesia malaysia philippines singapore and thailand later myanmar and cambodia also joined the membership with the afta asian free trade association or the asian free trade area another trade block of asia is asia pacific trade block having a membership from australia bernoulli cambodia china indonesia japan laos malaysia myanmar new zealand philippines singapore south korea thailand and vietnam perspective is again to facilitate free trading among the regional members free trading means reducing the custom charges so that easily you can transfer your goods and services and factors of production among the member nation now let's look at the map of africa as far as africa just after asia is the second largest continent and second most populous continent despite of the low concentration of wealth recent economic expansion and large young population make ish making this africa an important economic market in broader global context Africa is a major producer of important metals and mineral. Africa two most profitable mineral resources are gold and diamond. In 2008 Africa produced around 483 tons of the gold that is the 22% of the entire world gold production. Apart from this coffee is another most profitable commodity of the Africa. Africa country Brazil is also a member of the BRICS aiming to promote peace security development and cooperation having positive impact on international business Africa is also having a regional trade bloc known as Comesa common market for eastern and southern Africa the purpose of forming Comesa it is it spells like C O M E S A Comesa promote electricity trade enhance security of power supply faster regional integration is the perspective of formation of this Comesa regional trade bloc Now let's look at the next map of the Europe Europe is the 
second wealthiest and second largest economy in the world after the United States. Europe is the second smallest continent in size, but the third largest in population, having 50 countries in the continent. 27 European countries are member of European Union recently after Brexit exit in the year 2020. Most profitable business in Europe is technology, automobile, healthcare. And the most preferred countries of the Europe to do business is like France, Italy, Sweden, Denmark, Finland. These are the most preferred nations to do business with. Now let's talk about the North America. The different, uh, we can say the largest, North America is considered to be the largest continent in size, the fourth largest when it considered to be the population, right? It, it is the house of 23 countries and the major countries of North America includes Canada, Mexico, like and the USA and this is your Greenland, right? And these are going to be considered to be the major countries of the Northern America like Canada, this is your Canada, United States and the Mexico and the Greenland considered to be the major countries. North America is predominantly famous for the export of tropical fruits, coffee, sugar, fiber, minerals especially from the Caribbean area. Now, another trade block which has been formed by the North American countries that is a NAFTA formed with the collaboration of United States, United States, Mexico and Canada. The perspective of formation of this regional trade bloc again is to create a huge trade zone so that they can freely trade their goods and services with minimum custom duty or negligible custom duties and the charges. They can easily share the factors of production. They can easily transfer the technology and which help in facilitating the economy of these three countries of the North America, Mexico, Canada and United States. Now let's look at the Southern America. Southern America is a house of 12 different countries, is having world highest uninterrupted waterfall known as Angel Fall in Venezuela, largest river by volume, the Amazon River. Even it is a home of world largest snake. Southern America major exports usually revolve around food stuff and plant products like sugar, banana, cocoa, tobacco, corn, weed, these are the major export materials coming from South America. SAFTA is the regional trade block of South American countries and uh, another is the Mercosur created in 1991 and uh, the members of the Mercosur are Brazil, Paraguay and Uruguay are the four essential members of Mercosur. And when they signed the treaty, the purpose is to go for free movement of again goods and services and factors of production. You as a citizen of India need to know about different regional trade blocks from the perspective of finding how these different trade blocks are facilitating and helping in the growth of their nation how we can take the benefit and how we can expand our economy and integrate our economy with the economy of these kind of the developed nations or maybe the developing nations in order to get the benefit of expanding your business in order to create a new market or in order to develop the understanding of dealing with diversified culture, tradition and rituals. Now let's review. So this is what we did today's lecture. We try to uh, understand the globalization perspective. We try to understand how good it could be and how bad it could be. What are the various dark sides of the globalization? What are the penalties the people are paying for because they have allowed and accepted globalization? But the perspective is not to threaten anyone, the perspective is not to be afraid of knowing the dark side and the penalty of the globalization, perspective solely to make you understand what can be the problem when you are solely relying on globalization. 
because most of the time it has been observed that industrialized countries are creating a mutual interdependent. However, developing countries are getting solely dependent on these industrialized countries, which is not the good sign. You should equally develop your own depend you should equally develop your zone of or your area of excellency or your skill where others should be dependent on you rather than solely relying or depending upon the foreign economy. Otherwise, the day is not very far when again these developed nations are going to rule us. So we need to understand that privatization is good, globalization is good. But you have to keep in mind the dark side and the penalty that such globalization can impose on your economy if you are solely or wholeheartedly only relying on the globalization. The next thing that we discuss in today's lecture is about the geography of the world. We try to look at the different maps of Europe, Asia, North America, South America, Africa and as a whole of the entire world map. We try to look at it and try to find out what, who are known for what. We come to know that Africa is very good in terms of the minerals and the natural resources. They could uh, produce 483 tons of the gold in a year, which is almost 22% of the entire world production of the gold. That means we can have some trading related to gold, some trading related to such kind of the minerals and how I can also find some ways of connecting. I as a small businessman, maybe here in India, how I can connect with the African mines or how I can have some access of the material from there, which is going to be cost effective to me. So the perspective of understanding and looking at different map is to find out the possible business which can be with different nations. And also look at the look at the geography of the world and try to question yourself as they could do well why we couldn't do well. I hope, dear learners, you have understood that today's lecture. All the best for your future. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. British humour does not have a very high standing in the world. When people talk about it, they usually do so with a certain degree of disparagement. Yet all this is, I think, rather unfortunate because if I read out to you a certain section from Jerome K. Jerome's famous novel Three Men in a Boat, you will realise that not only is British humour genuinely funny, it is probably even better than some of the other samples of humorous writings that you might have read in the recent past. The story that I am going to read out is told by Jerome, who thinks he is suffering from some kind of a malady. I remember going to the British Museum one day to read up the treatment <coughs> for some slight ailment of which I had a touch. <coughs> Hay fever, I fancy it was. I got down the book and read all I came to read and then in an unthinking moment I idly turned the leaves and began to indolently study diseases generally. I forgot which was the first distemper I plunged into, some fearful, devastating scourge, I know. And before I had glanced half down the list of premonitory symptoms, it was borne in upon me that I had fairly got it. I sat for a while, frozen with horror, 
And then in the listlessness of despair, I again turned over the pages. I came to typhoid fever, read the symptoms, discovered that I had typhoid fever. Must have had it for months without knowing it. Wondered what else I had got. Turned up, sent Vitus's dance. Found, as I expected, that I had that too. Began to get interested in my case and determined to sift it to the bottom and so started alphabetically. Read up Agu and learned that I was sickening from it and that the acute stage would commence in about another fortnight. Bright's disease, I was uh, relieved to find, I had only in a modified form. And uh, so far as that was concerned, I might live for years. Cholera I had with uh, severe complications and uh, diphtheria I seemed to have been born with. I plodded conscientiously through the 26 letters and the only malady I could conclude I had not got was housemaid's knee. I felt rather hurt about this at first. It seemed somehow to be a sort of slight. Why hadn't I got housemaid's knee? Why this invidious reservation? After a while, however, less grasping feelings prevailed. I reflected that I had every other known malady in the pharmacology and I grew less selfish and determined to do without housemaid's knee. Gout in its most malignant stage, it would appear, had seized me without my being aware of it. And zymosis. I had zymosis evidently from boyhood. There were no more diseases after zymosis, uh, so I concluded there was nothing else the matter with me. I sat and pondered. I thought, what an interesting case I must be from a medical point of view. Uh, what an acquisition I should be to a class. Students would have no need to walk the hospitals if they had me. I was a hospital in myself. All they need to do would be to walk around me and, after that, take the diploma. Then I wondered how long I had to live. I tried to examine myself. I felt my pulse. Uh, I could not, at first, feel any pulse at all. Then, all of a sudden, it seemed to start off. I pulled out my watch and timed it. I made it 147 to a minute. I tried to feel my heart. I could not feel my heart. It had been beating, but now it had stopped beating. I have since been induced to come to the opinion that it must have been there all the time and must have been beating, but I cannot account for it. I patted myself all over my front, from what I call my waist up to my head, and I went a bit around each side and a little way up the back but I could not feel or hear anything. I uh, tried to look at my tongue. I stuck it out as far as ever it would go and I shut one eye and tried to examine it with the other. I could only see the tip and the only thing that I could gain from that was to feel more certain than before that I had scarlet fever. I had walked into the reading room, a happy, healthy man, I crawled out a decrepit wreck. Our friend next visited a doctor and there he got a prescription. 
which said to eat well, to go for long walks and not to worry his heads over things he did not understand. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippets.